Hello and welcome to part one of the QED lecture on randomized controlled trials or RCTs. Now I think we probably all agree that the distribution of resources in this world of ours is grotesquely unequal and grotesquely unfair. Uh, poor societies and individuals and people deserve and should have far more than they have at the moment. And yet we have to accept the reality at the moment is that people involved in development, people developing their own communities have to struggle by with terribly low amounts of material resources. Um, so they've got to think about how they allocate those resources. If you're a government or an NGO trying to intervene to make people's lives better somewhere, you have to be careful about how you use resources. But how do we know what works the best? Um, how do we know that something we're putting resources into is having a successful effect? It could be doing harm, or even if it's not doing harm, it could be that using those same precious resources in some other fashion, some other intervention, development intervention would do better. So we're, we're wasting a potential opportunity there. So if we want to apply social science to this and think about maximizing our knowledge and understanding of how we do things effectively, we should uh, adopt a more scientific approach. Um, but the scientific knowledge is generally built up most reliably by experiments. Great. And people have claimed that doing experiments in this way is the best way to make sure we're not wasting scarce resources. But is it okay to experiment with poor people like the ones in the photograph? Is it okay to play roulette with the poor? Or is this something we must definitely do in order to ensure that the inadequate resources that our world has made available to poor people are at least used to the best possible effect? That's what this lecture is about. It's about randomized controlled trials and development. So please listen on. I hope you find it interesting. Uh, the picture I'm starting with here is a picture of an RCT carried out in India where marriage is illegal when you are under 18, but still common in many areas. And the girls here have been told that um, as long as they remain unmarried and they're under 18, they'll be entitled to a free jerry can of cooking oil each month. So these girls here have brought certificates along, signed certificates to say that they're still unmarried and they're gonna collect their free cooking oil. Um, so we'll look at now at the method behind this. This is what we'll look at in the lecture outline, reminder of what experimental designs are, then the main focus on RCTs, some criticisms of that, some modifications that address these criticisms and strengthen it in other ways. Um, then we move on beyond the idea of research design to looking at the particular methods and techniques that allow us to put research designs into practice. And that's of course the focus of a lot of the rest of the semester. And then there are conclusions. So first of all, we look at experimental designs. Now, what's the motivation for this? Well, Angus Dayton, British economist who won the Nobel Prize for Economics in 2015, said this, and let me not read it all out, so I'll let you pause it if you want to read all that. But it's a frustration about, really, we're trying the same thing again and again, and we never seem to learn from this. Uh, we don't seem to build on what's gone before. And so, the conclusion is, we need to move towards RCTs, or randomized controlled trials. This is the RCT. And as I said in last week's lecture, these are seen as a gold standard of evidence. And we often build upon the success that they're supposed to have had in medicine, which I think many people accept they have had in medicine. So to show how they work, we're going to go back to an example from the first lecture. Hooray, school toilets again. So can these really be barriers to girls' education? Well, if we recap, there's two possible ways we thought about so you could assess the claim. You get some evidence from schools in a poor rural region, and the first design was like this. So first you measure girls' attendance, then improve toilets, and you measure attendance again. The alternative design is this one, where you divide the schools into two, two groups, give the first group improved toilets and the second group nothing, and this is the control group. And then you measure attendance in both groups and compare it. So remember the pros and cons of those, both these. We call these the before and after design and the with and without design. So the before and after, the advantage of that is it does measure change, the before and after, but what you don't get is perhaps that change would have happened anyway, even if you hadn't bothered with the toilets. So to get over that, you could try with and without. The comparison can help you address the intervention because you get this, what would have happened without it. You can compare, well, what would have happened without it is given by what happened with the control group. But what you haven't got here is the, the change isn't measured. And you also don't know, was there a difference anyway between these groups before the intervention? What both designs run up again is the 
problem of the counterfactual. What would have happened if you hadn't had the intervention? And this, as I said before, is in fact completely impossible to solve without going into a parallel universe because you can never have exactly the same schools with exactly the same uh, students in them and exactly the same circumstances, those identical people in identical circumstances, both with and without the toilets. That's not possible. There's, there's always got to be some way of getting around the fact you can't do that. So they're both trying to address that. Now let's think about how experimental design might help us get closer. The problem here is that there are many factors that could influence a girl's attendance at school. I've got some here, the distance from the school, what the parents do, how well she's doing, whether there's going to be a job at the end of it for the girl, all these other things, how good the teachers are. And one of them is toilets, but it's only one of them, the possible factors. And what I advise you to do is at this point, pause the video and just think if you can come up with some other factors yourself or, or if you can understand how these factors will influence the girl's attendance. Now, the problem is that when you do what you do in the, in the, the second design, where you have a, a treatment group and a control group, is you split them into groups where one group gets toilets and one doesn't. But the problem is that as well as the toilets, you have all these other factors coming into play. And so if you see that there's higher attendance here and lower attendance here, it could be because this is different but it could also be because, there's, it could be because there's more wealth here or smaller distance or more employment availability in one group. So it could be due to some change in these factors instead of a change in these factors. So how are we going to be confident that it was this when there's all this happening as well? Well, the answer is we need to be reasonably confident that the influence of all these things here were the same in each group. But how is that possible when we we don't know what the influence of all these other things is. We don't know what the influence of distance is and religion and family size, teacher quality. We might be able to guess or maybe get information from somewhere else, but it's really hard to be confident about that. And if that's not enough, we also don't know whether we've got the whole list here. There could be other unknown factors also having a, an attendance, uh, effect on attendance. So we need to be confident that the, effect, the, the, the effects of all these other things is equal if this method is going to make any sense at all. So that's where we turn to randomized controlled trials, which I'll talk about in the next short clip.